Good morning, I'm Christina with Ask a Montessorian and I am coming to you guys today from Mesa, Arizona. Um, I am on the, let me try and remember how to say it, Dream, let's see, it's not walk, Dreamland Via Desert Nature Walk and it is so beautiful out here, it's really gorgeous. I did a live the other day and I don't know if it posted, I'm still learning how to do lives, um, but I showed a little bit of this area and it's really incredibly beautiful. So I wanted to take advantage of this opportunity again and share it with you. And then we're gonna get, in, we're gonna get into the topic of becoming a prepared Montessorian and how to do it. So without further ado, I will show you the dreamland Dreamland via Desert Nature Walk. If you guys check out my Facebook page, you'll see some more pictures of this beautiful area. So <clears throat> I had two things happen in the past month. Since I've been telling more and more people about my consulting business, I've been having more conversations about Montessori, about classrooms, and more in particular about what it's like for teachers in the classrooms. And then um, I've met with a few parents and this mom came to me Hi. <laughs> this mom came to me and said, I will never put my child in a Montessori classroom because they are um, very unstructured and chaotic. And she had seen one Montessori classroom and she made that broad assumption about all of them. I took a deep breath <laughs> and I... Um, asked her if she would like to know my opinion first before simply sharing it and she said well yes of course that's why I'm talking to you and I said well you have to take each situation on a school by school classroom by classroom teacher by teacher like my trainer said case by case basis and the name Montessori is in public domain, so a child care center can open a Montessori school and put a pink tower in the corner and not have any trained teachers, charge Montessori tuition, have chaos, and then that reflects on the Montessori community. There are some remarkably talented Montessori teachers out there who create beautiful classrooms and their children are excelling far beyond state standards and when you find one it is I highly recommend you observe as often as you can because it is a beautiful beautiful to watch my mom was one of those teachers she was a primary teacher for over 40 years and she could leave her classroom all the time and Maria Montessori has a quote about that um, it's something along the lines of um, when the children don't notice that you've left the room. That's when you know that you've been successful. <laughs> and so my mom could leave all the time because the children would just keep working. They had the lessons that they needed to be successful. And then I had um, another friend, a friend, <clears throat> the parent was more of an acquaintance, acquaintance, excuse me. I had a friend come to me and say that she was struggling because um, she had some children with behavior issues in her classroom and she didn't know how to normalize the classroom, how to normalize the children. They were physical with each other. They were disrupting her lessons. Um, it was an elementary classroom and she did have an assistant though. So I suggested that she encourage her assistant to redirect these boys and to focus on these boys a lot of the time. Um, and then her job is to become what uh, Gregory McDonald, my trainer, calls a lesson machine. It's important that 
if, especially if you're in elementary, that you're giving 12, excuse me, 12 to 15 lessons per day. You know your albums inside and out. Every chance you get, you're studying those albums. And those lessons that you're giving those children are giving them the opportunity to concentrate in the classroom. And I found, which um, my mom, um, I had a conversation with her about it and we weren't really on the same page entirely. So it's up to you and how you want to manage your classroom. However, I found that um, in the beginning, I was focusing on the children who were struggling with controlling their bodies and having um, behavior issues and whatnot. Um, new children coming into my classroom primarily. Um, I was a primary teacher though, not elementary. And I had a set of twin boys who were just totally out of control. So um, at first I wanted to give them lessons, right? I had to counterintuitively look at that situation and I ended up choosing to focus on the children who were already slightly normalized because of their routines at home and how their parents had worked with them and because they'd been in Montessori previously. And I started giving the children who could sit still, I showered them with lessons. They're going around the classroom and they're working on those lessons, right? And then the younger children who are disruptive are watching them and learning from them. And then of course, um, in the afternoon when it's a little bit more peaceful and they may be a little bit more um, calm, I would give lessons to the children who were new to the classroom and out of control and whatnot. And it was always practical life, lots and lots of practical life so that they can calm themselves down and begin to focus on things. So the number one, the number one piece of advice I can give you, regardless of whether you're in 12 to 15, 12 to 18, um, 6 to 9, 6 to 12, 9 to 12, 0 to 18 months, 18 months to 3, <laughs> Regardless of what age child you're working with or what age classroom you've been tasked with, become a lesson machine. Study your albums very diligently and then just give as many lessons as you can fit into that three hour work cycle. And then in the afternoon, you got an hour, hour and a half, maybe you have some who are napping, you continue giving lessons. Give as many lessons as you can in the beginning of the school year. I mean, the first six months. Um, it took about seven months for me to normalize my classroom. It was my very first year teaching. teaching. And I had floated before. Um, but I'd also worked in my mom's school for many years. So I was familiar with Montessori and I knew the materials and then I was a Montessori student myself. So that helped a lot. But it still took me seven months. And I thought it was gonna happen in what? Maybe 60 days? Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And throughout those um, seven months, my director was putting new children into the classroom, which makes it even more challenging. So they never froze the enrollment. They just kept adding more children to my workload. So um, <clears throat> the last two months, because, you know, a nine-month school year, the last two months, I was in heaven because I realized that I had normalized the classroom and I could step out and I could come back and they were all working and they were all concentrating they were in control of their bodies they were loving their classroom <laughs> I received this letter from one of the parents saying I really hope you stay in Montessori because you changed my li my son's life <laughs> he had another teacher there at that school before I came and he, his dad said that the light went out in his eyes, kind of like um, what Trevor Eisler says in Montessori Madness. If you look up that uh, YouTube video, he talks about the light leaving the child's eyes because they're forced to sit in desks and they're forced to look up the teacher and they're forced to do the same thing at the same time and all that stuff that comes along with traditional schooling. Um, but this Montessori teacher had taken the light out of his son's eyes by making the lessons really boring and requiring rote memorization and things like that. And 
I didn't do any of that. All I did was give lots and lots of lessons. And I remember focusing on inciting interest. My trainer kept saying, have fun with the children and incite interest in whatever it is that you're showing them. In order to do that, you have to smile. You have to be inviting. You have to be prepared. You have to know your album and you have to be able to give a beautiful lesson with attention to detail and capture that child's interest, especially the younger ones, because they want to run around. Movement is their goal right now. So you really have to be on your game with the two and a half and three year olds. <laughs> and so um, the number one thing that I can tell you is to know your albums so well that you can become a lesson machine. Focus on that. Um, <clears throat> my mom and I were not on the same page about whether you should give children, give uh, lessons to the children who are a little bit less deviated she felt like you should give lessons to all of the children all the time and you're constantly taking notes and you're making sure that you cover um, between you know seven and 15 children a day depending on the day of course um, but you want to make sure that you give a child I mean it depends on the size of your classroom but you want to touch upon um, every area so you've got practical life, math, language, and sensorial, and then it gets a lot more diver diverse in elementary, but cultural and art, culture and art. You wanna to touch on these areas at least once a day, and you want to connect with each child at least once a day. That's why in Montessori, with the practical life for grace and courtesy, we greet each child as they walk into the classroom so that you're creating that bond with them and building rapport and gaining their trust so that when you do give them a lesson, they're like, oh my gosh, I get to have a lesson with Mrs. Houston. And they're very excited. And it's, it's a special experience, they love it. So anyhow, um, inside interest, know your albums, give lots and lots of lessons, and know, know in your heart, have faith in your training and your ability that the classroom will normalize and the children will calm down. It takes time and it takes diligence, but once they do reach that point of peace and harmony, all of this work will be well worth it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me here today in this beautiful desert area. It's so pretty here. Um, please feel free to always ask a Montessorian. And as my son Greg likes to remind me because I tend to forget to say it, please click like and subscribe so that you can see um, more of our videos on Montessori. Um, I think that's it, yeah. Thank you guys again for joining me here today. I hope you all have a terrific day. <laughs>